Hi, I'm Nuno from Imaginando and in this video I want to show you how to create a custom material with VS. Well, let's get started. In the new version of VS we have the, the ability to, to create a new material. So you, you have two banks now, the factory and the user materials and you can simply part from an existing material to, to create a new material. So let's start with the basics and, and, and with a really simple one like the, the plain color. Let's clone this material and automatically you will be faced with the, with the material editor which is a simple text editor. And in this text editor you, you code a GLSEL shader. A GSL SEL shader is a, a, a computer program that runs on a GPU and instructs the GPU on how to paint a simple fragment. Uh, this is why it's called a fragment shader. Um, shaders is a really complex topic. Um, there is an, an incredible online resource called the Book of Shaders was written by Patricio Gonzalez Vivo and Jen Lowe and this basically introduces in what a shader is and how do you start coding your own shaders. I will part from a simple example on how to um, draw a circle and for that I'm going to jump directly to the shapes uh, chapter of this book and um, and there is a small bit of code here that draws this circle and I want to show you how to use this code to draw a circle as a material in VS. So the first thing we are going to do is to copy this code to VS. Sorry, okay, let's copy this code and take it here. All right. Okay. So, as you can see, nothing is being painted. Um, and by the way, let me talk to you about the manifest. The manifest is a is is a, a JSON object. Um, within a comet, a C comet uh, style um, so that VS knows more about your material. And there, there are some required parameters and we have updated our documentation to, to explain um, more about the particularities of this manifest. You can find that information on the layer manager chapter um, in the subsection material editor. We describe what the manifest is and what are the required properties and we also cover in detail the, the, the process of transforming uh, the, the, um, this piece of code that I'm going to use, the circle drawing, uh, in the documentation as well. So. Let's get started with this. Um, okay, nothing here displays any kind of error, uh, but and nothing is also painted, so we need to find find it out. We don't need these variables because we have we have already a variable called resolution and time. We don't use we don't make use of the mouse variable. So let's delete these two variables and now we have an error here and the other error is that u underscore resolution does, does not exist. So let's rename this variable to resolution. Okay, uh, we don't have errors anymore but still we don't see anything being painted. However, if we move this preview window here, 
the circle is being drawn here. So the thing is, it is being drawn on the origin of the OpenGL coordinate system, and we need to to display it here in this in this uh, position. And for this, we will take advantage of the built-in text chord variable that we make available. Uh, the text chord variable holds a normalized the positions of the textures in a, in a normalized uh, normalized. Okay, so um, this means that it goes from zero to one for the width and for the height. Um, the circle is now being drawn, but there is a problem. It's, it's not a circle, it's an oval. So how do we turn this into a circle now? We need to basically fix the ratio between the, the, the height and the width. So in order to do this, we are going to declare a float here, which is going to be the aspect. And we are going to divide the Y for the X. Okay. Um, and now let's create another VEC2, which we will call div. Uh, and it's a vector that will have one on the X and aspect on the I. And now let's multiply this for text chord. All right. We now have a, a circle uh, that looks like a circle, but it's not centered in, in the screen. One thing we could, could, could do right away is to declare a radius parameter. So let's declare here a parameter. Let's call it, uh, let's open a new object. No, she's an object here. And let's call it radius. And let's set the radius default value as 0 0.5. You can see right away that a new parameter has become available here in this um, knobs bar, bar with the name of the parameter. And each, each layer supports up to uh, seven parameters. So you can declare up to seven parameters in a material. And, um, and now to use this uh, new parameter, Let's replace this parameter, this variable, uh, this uh, function argument, the circle argument, which is radius, by the variable radius. When you declare a parameter, the name used for the parameter will also uh, be made available as a, a variable. So now, if we move this knob it will reflect the radius of the circle all right but still it's not centered in the screen because the circle function has an offset here if we take out this bit it will position the circle into the origin uh, but now we need to move it to the to the center, right? So let's declare two other parameters: one for the x and another for the y. And make use of these parameters to control the position of the um, circle. Okay, so basically we need to 
create some kind of offset here in this position if if we subtract a vec2 with 0 0.5 0 0.5 Okay, can you see it moving? Okay, and if we now replace this 0 0.5 by X and this one by Y, let's see what happens. Okay, as you can see, the center of the circle is, is positioned at X equals zero. And now the center of the circle um, matches x equals 1. The same happens for y. Actually, y isn't perfect yet. For some reason, it, it is going above y because we need to multiply this by aspect. Yeah. Okay. So now, if we put this on 0 0.5 and this on 0 0.5, it will be precisely on the center of the screen. Okay, so now you have a simple circle material that can be controlled in X, Y, and even the radius. <coughs> but the alpha and brightness parameters do nothing. So what is missing here? I've told you that we have built-in variables and those built-in variables are time, opacity, alpha, color, resolution, and text score. We have already used the text score to position the, to draw uh, in, in the texture, texture coordinates of this uh, window. The resolution that gives us the viewport width and height. Um, and we haven't used the color yet, so let's make use of the color, because if we change the color here, nothing happens to you. So we have a, already a, a color uh, variable uh, declared here. Let's, let's change this variable name to C instead of color and use C here. And now let's use our built-in color which is color.rgb and we will multiply it by c so now we have the color we define here and to control the brightness and the brightness is is linked with opacity we multiply this by opacity Okay, so if we move brightness, we, sh we now have brightness control. And, but alpha is not working yet, so we need to make use of the alpha variable and use it here in the fourth component of this color vec vec4 vector. So let's change to alpha. Okay, if, if we move alpha to zero, and brightness to zero, you will see that the background is green. This was the color we have chosen uh, for background color. If we push alpha up, there will be no transparency in the layer. And if in the material, uh, sorry, the material, um, and if, if we push alpha to zero, there, there will be full transparency on the material but but we can still control the material being drawn with the brightness this is what allows us to to manage the, the polyphonic uh, effect when you when you have a, a, a material that is being triggered by several uh, MIDI notes for instance um, So this is how you do a really, really simple material. Now we can save, close, 
and um, rename it. Let's rename this to um, circle. Circle with color. Okay. I'm going to delete these other two materials. Let's let's edit just one other thing, which is the default color. You can have a color like the one that was being defined here, starting with an uh, with a cardinal, followed by the X string. Or you can use uh, SVG named colors like red. So let's save it, close, and now the default is red. Uh, let's add it once again. Just choose a different radius. Let's use a different default radius. Save, close. Okay, so the default value is 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 important to choose when the material is not in a layer and has no uh, custom parameters being set. This is how it will be displayed uh, in the material browser is with the default values. Now I'm going to show you how to port a material from an existing source code, um, which is going to be this neon ring. But let's let's part from the beginning. Um, First, I'm going to add it. I will discard this code. And start once again. So, uh, there are at least three main websites for, um, for finding shaders written by others. It's GLSCL Sandbox, it's Shader Toy, and ESF Editor. Each, each of these sites have their own variable nomenclature and um, complexities. If you want to import a material, an existing material to VS, you might need to do a lot of um, adjustments, manual adjustments. So um, my my advice is start with something really simple to try to understand the basics and don't try to, to pick up a shader that will that will have 1000 lines of code. And if you are not uh, comfortable with it, you know, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, and beware that many of these shaders are especially on shader toy these are complex artworks you know they're very heavy uh, they require a lot of gpu power and if you are going to do this on an ipad or or, or in a computer that doesn't have that much gpu capability it will be a, a terrible experience even the computer I'm using here, it doesn't have an incredible GPU. So even browsing uh, the the factory list, it, it's slow. It's very slow. So try to to work with simple stuff in the beginning. Okay, S things that you can see that clearly uh, perform well on the browser, and and doesn't have a lot of code. And then as you start to progress and understand things better, you, you can move on and do more complex stuff. Okay, uh, let's pick this one. It's a ring, uh, it has color and then it has movement. Let's look at the code. The code is also very simple and let's just try to, to pull this code from here to, to VS Editor. All right. So, neon ring. Let's pass it here. 
we will not be using this. All right. So once again, uh, first error being shown is use of an undeclared and identifier pi. So let's define pi. I don't I don't know where this pi equals 1.0 came from. That's not correct. So pi is at least 3.14. Um, doesn't make much sense, but let's keep. Let's keep going. Usually, th these materials start from adjusting the viewport and, and the position where it will start to, to paint. Uh, because a shader will only paint a single pixel, you know? Uh, so, um, the first step is, is usually to, to handle this first case where you you configure the point you are going to draw. So let's let's equal this to text chord like we made the last time. Declare it as a vec2. Okay, it's now showing something here, but it's a bit out. Just like in the other shader, the problem was an offset, right? As you can see. It seems like the the center of the circle is in the um, zero zero position of the coordinate system. So let's try to do uh, an offset here for 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and see what. Okay, we have the same issue. So this is not a circle. This is an oval. And what we need to do is to find the aspect using the resolution, resolution y divided by resolution x. So this is this gives us the, the ratio between y and x. And now we are going to declare uh, a vec2 something. I'm calling it div for division. Uh, so vec2 1.0 um an aspect and we need to multiply this by div okay and now if we change this for x which is already a parameter over here and y we can already move this around just like we did for the other circle. Okay, radius is not doing anything yet. So let's see, how can we control the radius? Sometimes you just need to, to try little things around, change variables and see what they are doing. If you don't understand what the code is doing, you need to try to modify things. And sometimes you, you can find really interesting accidents and turn them into a, a parameter that you can then control. So let's see what, what this variable does. Okay. This seems like some kind of, I don't know, glow. Could we could we say this that that this is a a thickness? So let's try to add a new parameter or simply rename this one to thickness. And here, let's do one minus thickness. 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 Okay. So let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, maybe we don't need to invert this. Okay. Something like this, right? Also, yeah. you, 
we, you can you can set min and maximum for for a parameter for instance uh, we can set that the minimum is 0 0.1 and if you don't say anything minimum will be 0 and maximum will be 1 but let's say that we want to constrain this to 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 Okay, 0 0.1 is already too much, let's make it 0 0.01, okay, and maybe, and maybe less, a little bit less here, okay, all right, but this is still not controlling radius, so let's now add something for radius. Let's remove the mini and the max for now. Um, and so how do we control the radius here? Let's see. Maybe this? Yeah. This is the radius. So let's simply replace here for radius. I think we just need to... Yeah maybe limit maybe say that the max will be 0 0.5 okay something like this okay and the only thing missing here is the same thing we did for the circle which is adjusting the, the max point for the y translation uh, so let's let's multiply this by aspect okay i think we have it uh, so <clears throat> brightness is not doing anything yet alpha is not doing anything yet and color is not doing anything yet so let's see what we can do about this uh, alpha is easy we just need to change this 20 by alpha okay oh, the brightness is also easy we just need to multiply all these by uh, opacity and uh, the color is a bit more tricky because uh, the color is, is being calculated based on on this and it, it has actually multiple colors uh, by the way if you want to see this uh, preview in full screen you just need to double click the preview area or click on this full screen button and to exit you just need to double click once again all right okay so this material has a lot of color already and let's, if we take these components out, because these are the components that are being calculated, um, I don't know what the result will be. So for now, let's try to multiply by the color.rgb component and change here the color. Okay, so it has some wicked results um, so the final material will be like this and we could uh, you could tell in this author field your name your name and in the URL uh, you could use your the original author uh, URL or source here and 
you could give like a, a custom default color. Let's save, close, and here you have it. Uh, let's change the default color to yellow. Save, close. Okay, now you have made the material and you want to share with someone. Uh, you just need to, in desktop you have two ways actually. One is uh, ex choosing export. It will ask you where you want to, to save this file. I will choose desktop. And the other way would be to go to the documents folder. Going to Imaginando, VS, user materials or materials, materials folder. And you have the, the, the same, exactly the same file here, neon ring. Um, so let's say we, we have already the neon ring here on the desktop. So let's delete it from here. And it's no longer in the user materials uh, bank. But you can now import the file from the desktop. Okay, it's here. So it's very easy to import and export materials. Um, it's not that easy to, to create new materials, but with a little persistence and patience, I think you will be uh, doing it quite easily as well. Uh, there, are, there are plenty of examples on but in order to really master uh, this um, art of comp computational graphics, you will need to, to read a lot of, of things about shaders. And I will definitely recommend reading the book of shaders and taking a look to these uh, websites. I really hope this tutorial has been clear enough. Uh, we are not experts in creating shaders ourselves. We can't uh, provide you um, more than the basics that we have already provided on our documentation. Um, but feel free to leave your comments in the section below. And um, we are really looking for forward to see what you will be creating with this new feature in VS. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.